Greetings, this is the second part of the American Soul story about Don Cornelius and Soul Train. In this part, uh, it starts off, if, I'm going to put it this, this way, if you haven't seen it yet and think it's going to be an issue, uh, go and watch it first and then come back to this. If not, I'm going in. This is the part two. Um... Don Cornelius is talking to a Caucasian producer at a Seferin and Son screening. Don Cornelius talks to the producer about advertisers for the show and seems to have a kind of nasty exchange with the guy. And he said, be careful what you say. And they talk about becoming business partners. Somebody's... Uh, father is in Vietnam and going through the whole Vietnam situation and uh, a lot of people got hurt or killed um, this girl and her mother having a conversation the mother's a nurse and the uh, and asked the daughter for help and um, she seems like she doesn't want to help the lady who was working with Don Cornelius with the auditions or a personal session seems to not like the job, but you know, still needs the money. And her boyfriend or husband is a man, of, uh, significant other is a police officer. And she's working in the office, and the Caucasian producer comes in and tells her to make him some coffee and you know, has the little male chauvinist attitude so she makes the coffee strong give it to him and says a very special recipe <laughs> if you need anything else don't hesitate to ask and he spits the coffee in the trash but before that he gets a message um from don Cornelius' wife to get in contact with him her and uh call her back um Don Cornelius and the uh, business partner basically they have a little talk and then it goes to the part where Don Cornelius is uh, talking to Gladys in the club and he's joking with her and Don Cornelius gangster buddy is talking about honey and he can make money selling honey Glass Knight's attorney comes to the table with a cease and desist order from the record company saying that they only want her to sing the approved songs on the show and anything else that, um, is not going to be proper. And she leaves and says she's going to be there for the taping of the show, the initial taping for the show. Um, and Don Cornelius tells Glass to, that he could, uh, she could sing whatever song she want to sing. That he got her back, and she uh, said, "You got to be careful with these folks." And he's like, "I don't, I'm not scared. I have no fear." The youth in this story, and this is going with Los Angeles, going during the time of Los Angeles, doing this this whole show thing, the whole Los Angeles thing. The youth are going through struggles with uh, trying to find their dreams and searching for fame. And some are dealing with family members that's involved in drugs. And certain individuals are getting involved in gangs, gang activity. Somebody's family member expected to come back home from Vietnam. The brother and sister who auditioned for Soul Train to be dancers to get exposure for their music career. The lady assistant for Don Cornelius uh, tells them that the program is taped one to three times a week. She, she uh, tells them that they got the part. They're excited. And she tries to talk to Don Cornelius. And he has a salty attitude with her. He's trying to catch a flight. Don and his business partner... 
me with a potential investor. And he said that he's not sure that the, the, that the investment is going to be good, the show's not going to do well, and people are not going to watch the show. And Don and the business part assured me that it's going to be a great success. And Don brings in some hookers to finesse the uh, investor, potential investor. And got one looking like uh, Diane Carroll and one like Marilyn Monroe. And uh, business partner said, you think it's going to work? He said, you might know business, but I know what men, the heart of men, and I know what men want. And basically, he basically was willing to do whatever he had to do to get that money for the show. I was like, wow, this is very interesting. I, I didn't know all this stuff. You know, as a kid, I watched this stuff, and I didn't know. Um, Don Cornelius starts the, starts the show, and the dancers are forming the famous Soul Train line. And he tell, and uh, the camera guy on the floor is saying, y'all need to get off the floor. And Don, Don says, no, we're going to keep this particular thing on the show as a staple, the Soul Train line. That's where the famous Soul Train line came about. One of the dancers is trying to lock up one of the other dancers because they want their spot so they tell me you, you need to change your outfit and go in this dressing room and they did that and then they locked him in the dressing room and the brother had to go in there and get her back and basically a fight ensued on the floor prior to that don was talking to and in potential investors for different companies for advertisers for the show and um told his business partner to make sure they get anything they want. And going back to the show, you know, the, the whole thing, the dancers have a little turmoil going between certain ones are trying to get other people's spot. So they get into a fight on the show and Don has to break the show and stop the tape and tell them that it's costing him a thousand bucks an hour and do y'all have any money to pay for me and tell them I don't care if you break your leg break your heel keep dancing keep the show going time is money money is time and I heard these stories you know back in the day that um that a lot of those people didn't get paid uh any money the celebrities did but the uh, dancers didn't get paid any money because I heard these stories that they didn't get paid nothing and a lot of them had to go to McDonald's or Burger King get something to eat a bite to eat or whatnot from what I heard, and uh, yeah, so a lot of them just go on the show to try to get some type of exposure for a record deal, or a lot of them became dance choreographers for movies and videos and different things with different groups, but anyway, um, so it goes back to, on the next part, it goes that Don and Gladys are in the club, they joking around, the gangster buddy that Don Cornelius met is still uh, talking about honey and how you can make money selling honey. The youth are getting in trouble in a gang situation and is getting mixed up with the police and a shootout ensues. And uh, some of the gang members escape in a car. Don Cornelius tells Glass to sing the song that she was sing on the show. And she plays... Um, Midnight Train to Georgia. Don cries after hearing the song and calls his wife. And she does not pick up the phone because he has not, every time she calls him, he never calls her or talks to her. The husband does not turn home from Vietnam. The family's destroyed. And it goes off. And I guess part three and four will come out on the 12th and the 19th. So that is it for part two. If you like my videos, y'all, please hit that like icon if you can and subscribe to Moochie 72 Peace. I'm out, y'all. Take care.